people welcome to my youtube channel set apart lifestyle here i film about faith lifestyle as they pertain to relationships today we're going to talk about a very interesting topic the christian culture so before we go further i would like us to say a word of prayer dear father thank you for another opportunity to talk about faith and lifestyle we pray oh lord that the christian culture will become part and parcel of us in jesus mighty name we pray amen so let's go right into this topic the christian culture i remember when i was in 200 level we did a course titled asian literature and there we read books by arabian writers like the arabian nights and some other books and so one of the main characteristics our lecturer wanted us to bring out was that the arabians made the islamic religion their culture and so that was like that was like the most important thing I took from that course because I can never forget that characteristic of that book. Most of us can't forget that. So since then, it has been ringing in my head, making Christianity your culture. I've been wanting to write on this topic, but I've not really had the chance to do that before. So today we're going to talk about it. Very interesting. So this morning I was doing my Bible study, thinking of what topic should I talk about, and then the passage in which I was reading just struck me. The Christian culture. This, this can work for what you've been looking for. And so we're going to do it like a Bible study today. Our show is going to look like a Bible study because I'm reading from the Bible and explaining what I want you guys to get. So let's go into it. Today we're going to be reading from Romans chapter 12, verse 6 to 21. We're not going to read the whole passage, but I'm going to bring out some verses that are very important to me till the end of the chapter, just so we can work with that. So firstly, I'll read from verse 6 to verse 8. That is where my first um, point will be coming from. I have five points on this video. This point is going to be from the verse 6 to the verse 8. It says, In His grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you're a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. So my first point is on leadership, counseling, and teaching. Let me start with leadership. He said, if God has given you leadership ability, Take it seriously. Some of us are leaders in different spheres of our lives, but we don't take this responsibility seriously. We don't put our all into it. We don't, we don't give it everything we have. We have a lot of potentials as leaders. There are a lot of things that you can do to get people to work well with you. You're not giving your all to it. The Bible is asking you, lead well. Don't find fault in everything that every other person is at fault as you are the leader. Every other person has to do everything you have to do. No, you're a leader. You have to lead. Give example. Lead well. As a leader, all your followers are at fault. You're never at fault. You're always shouting at them, treating them as, as below you. That is not good. Lead well. Let me talk about the counselor. The Lord has given you the gift to encourage people. It's not an easy gift to inspire and motivate people. To talk to people, to prompt them to do things, to change their life, to influence their life. Give it your all. Give it your best. I know sometimes it can be tiring. Someone, I, I, I talk to a lot of my friends, give them advices. Someone can be coming to you in a very, very bad time. So, bro, I need your advice. What should I do? And you're like, oh my God, I'm not emotionally, like, I'm not emotionally prepared for this. What am I going to do? And you just tell, you just relax, do anything and tell them anything. They were, they were expecting so much from you. The Bible said, if your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. Don't treat them badly because they came to you for advice and you feel like you're tired, you don't have the time for that. Treat them well. The last one is if you're a teacher. This one touched me the most because most times some of my friends come to me, that's are let's read together, I want you to teach me something. And sometimes I'll be like, like I'm having a headache right now, I'm not feeling fine. And I'll just be like, okay, come, let me teach you, come, let me teach you. And then I'll just be... Doing anyhow, behaving anyhow to the person. I won't lie, I do that. I'm just taking myself for example. If you're a teacher, please teach well. This is a gift God has given to you. So people come and they're like, when you teach this thing to me, I understand it better, please teach me. 
and then they are not able to get it easily because I know to be a teacher is not easy and they're able to get it easily and you're shouting at them and you're treating them badly it's not good teach properly and teach them the correct thing don't go and teach don't go and teach them wrong thing second point is love genuinely let's read from verse 9 it says don't just pretend to love others really love them hate what is wrong hold tightly to what is good love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other most of us christians what we what we express is hypocritical love we don't love people genuinely when they are in front of us we love them the ones they've left behind their backs we talk badly about them talk down on them we don't genuinely love people with all our hearts some of us let me say let me not just generalize but some of us it's not fair. You have to genuinely love people. Not because the Bible says love people. Love them because they are humans like you. Don't find, don't, don't try to see all the flaws in them and, and amplify it and make it seem like you're the perfect person. Just because you're a Christian, you can't like people from other religion because they are not believers like you. That is wrong because God loves each and every one of us. So you have to love anybody, everybody despite their ideology and their beliefs. This is a way to even draw them closer to God because they see the love of God through you. You are expressing the kind of love that God has for you. So then, you are living exemplary. That is what we Christians, our lives, are supposed, our lives are supposed to be exemplary to both your family members and to your neighbors. Your family members, most of them don't hold strong to God. But when they see you, they understand the love of God. They are not supposed to see hate from you as a Christian. You are supposed to genuinely love. Don't amplify their flaws. We do that a lot as Christians. My third point is, Work for the Lord enthusiastically. Let's look at verse 11. Romans 12 verse 11. It says, Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. I know we are busy people. We have school. We have work. We have different things. Our businesses. And so they give you something to do. A work to carry out in the vineyard of the Lord. And you're like, now let me day here. Every time, me, 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 please let someone else do it. You have to work with the Lord with your whole heart. Don't grudgingly do it. I know some of us do this and it's not right. When you've been given a work to do for the Lord, especially in the house of the Lord, it might not even be the house of the Lord. It can be outside. Do it with all your heart happily. Don't grudgingly do the work of the Lord. The blessing attached to that will not be given to you because you didn't use your whole heart to do it. These are the little things that we take for granted. It's not all about standing on the pulpit to preach, to speak in tongues, to do deliverance and breakthrough. Cultivate the lifestyle of a Christian. Let it become your culture. The fourth thing I want to talk about is pride and humility. Let's look at verse 16. It said, Live in harmony with each other and don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. Two things I would like to talk about. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of other ordinary people. I believe that humility is not when you're humble with people who are of the same level with you. No, humility is your ability to still be humble when people that you consider who are lower than you, probably in terms of status, probably in terms of intellect, probably in terms of money or economic um, class. You might feel these people are lower than you. Your ability to still remain humble. That is what is humility. It's not that you people of the same class with you, um, your same rich, rich people, or the same people with the same intellect, then you are humble. Nah, 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 nah. The ability to still be humble when people who are lower than you, or people you consider lower than you, or ordinary people, that is real humility. You treat them well. You enjoy their presence. You don't see them as filth. You don't see them as low class. You don't treat them badly. You don't maltreat them. Because they are humans like you. Only that you're a little privileged to be above them in terms of whatever. That is humility. Do not be proud. I believe that proud, pride chases people away. When they try to want to come close to you in order so that you could reflect the love of God to them and you are exhibiting pride, it chases them away. You're trying to, this person is trying to say, please, I need your advice. They say, no, 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 I don't talk to people like you. You're not in my class. Can you see the way I'm dressed? Can't you see the way I talk? No, 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 no. We can't associate with each other. You've driven them away. They can't find the love of God in you. 
Pride drives people away. The humility, you are, the people are comfortable in your presence. They come close to you. Please, I have this issue. I want to talk to you about this. And you bring them. They feel welcome in your presence. That is how you can exhibit the love of God. The second thing I want to talk about under pride is, and don't think you know it all. A lot of us do this. Especially when you feel like you're spiritually higher than this person. You've read a lot of books. Ah, you've read the Bible 20 times. You've attended a lot of seminars and conferences. You've listened to a, a lot of talks and messages. You feel like there is nothing you can learn from this person. This person just got converted a month ago. What does, what does the Holy Spirit want to say to this person? Or what does the Holy Spirit want to use this person to that I have not seen, that I have not heard? It's part of pride. Or the person, you're a leader. The person is lower than you. No idea that the person can bring you will accept because you feel like you know it all. You are never wrong. You are always right. It's not good at all. That is not how to live as a Christian. You're supposed to welcome everybody. Welcome the ideas of everyone. Don't feel like you know everything because you are more exposed. Be teachable. Be teachable. Be ready to learn. My last point is conquer evil. That is a Christian lifestyle. That is our Christian culture. I'm going to take from two places. Verse 17 says, Never pay back evil with more evil. While 21 says, don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. These two verses are in sign because it says, don't pay evil with evil. Someone does something bad to you, you want to pay them back with evil. That is not, an, that is not a Christian lifestyle. Verse 19 says, the B part of verse 19 says, I will take revenge, I will pay them back, says the Lord. Vengeance is for the Lord. Allow the Lord to pay back those people who have wronged you. Don't pray evil to befall them. You'll see that other part, verse 14 and verse 15 says that too. They stress this point. Don't be bad. Don't say because this person has been wicked to me, so I have to pay evil with evil. This person slapped me, I have to slap the person back. Jesus said it. When they slap, you turn the second cheek. It's not that easy, but sometimes you just have to do that. This person has wronged you. When you see the person tomorrow, greet them. And if you are in a, if, if you are in a fortunate situation, Help them. Let them look, like, look at you and be like, eh? The Bible says in the last part of verse 20 that in doing this, you will help burning coals of shame on their head. They will become ashamed. Eh? After everything I did to this person, this person is still able to do this for me. And this person is really a child of God. This is the Christian culture. You are able to exhibit it. Don't let evil conquer you. But conquer evil by doing good. You cannot conquer evil by, with evil. You're just going to multiply evil. But once you conquer it with evil, you're letting your light shine brighter in this world that is full of darkness. We need a lot of lights. We need a lot of lights. So I've given these five important points that will help us as Christians. It will help us live the Christian culture. Because I believe we need to make Christianity our culture. It's not the fact that I am an evil girl. And then anybody that sees me because of the way I behave, not because I have evil intonation, no. no. But because they'll say, ah, this girl likes money. Nah, Ibo girl be this. See this Yoruba? You don't know she's Yoruba? Have you seen the way she was talking to that man? She was so mannerless. Now like Yoruba people now. They should not be able to trace your culture by your behavior or the way you act. Because you have a new culture. Uh -huh. You belong to a new tribe. The lion of the tribe of Judah. Yes, that is your new tribe. So they should not trace your lineage because of the way you behave. But they're like, ah, I can't really tell where this person is from because she's not behaving like any of these um, people we know. That is when Christianity has become your culture. I hope that this lesson or this show has been an impactful one. I've learned a lot from this, from talking about this topic, and I hope you do also. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, give this video a thumbs up, and share with your family and friends. I want to hear from you in the comment section, please. What do you think about this video and what other contributions do you have to give? Thank you all. I love you. God bless you. Bye. Hello, unique people. Today, I want to talk about... <laughs> unique people, today... Unique people. It's happening.